In this video, I'll be designing and editing the G-code to machine these brass offset cam nuts on a Tormac 8L lathe using the gang tooling for the Tormac 8L lathe that I described in a previous video. I designed this cam nut using the Fusion 360 software and then generated the G-code to machine these parts in the manufacturing section of the Fusion 360 software. However, the G-code required a number of corrections in order to properly rigid tap the threads at the end of this piece, to properly use the gang tooling, and to speed up the manufacturing operation. The manual editing of the G-code for the machining of these brass offset cam nuts in a Tormac 8L lathe will be described in this video. This is a detailed drawing of the offset cam nut for the AccuSlice carriage. I took the dimensions and other information from this cam nut drawing and produced the cam nut in the design module of the Fusion 360 software. The stem portion of the cam nut is 1 quarter inch in diameter by 0.62 inches long and contains a center drilled and number 1032 tapped hole which is 0.5 inches deep. At the bottom of the stem is a 0.375 inch diameter hub. This left side of the cam nut will be machined on a Tormac 8L lathe. The opposite or right side of the cam nut consists of a 1 half inch diameter offset flange. This offset flange is offset from the center of the stem by 0 0.025 inches. A 3 16th inch wide by 0.15 inch deep hex hole is designed for a 3 16th inch Allen wrench will be machined at the face of this flange. This right side of the cam nut will be machined on the CNC mill. The CNC mill will enable the offset machining of the flange and also enable the drilling of the hex hole on its face. For this video, we will only be developing the G-code for the machining of the left side of the cam nut on the Tormac 8L lathe as shown in this drawing. I then transferred this cam nut design into the manufacturing module of the Fusion 360 software and designed the various tooling operations to machine the cam nut. I'll be using four turning tools and six separate machining operations to machine the cam nut on a Tormac 8L lathe. I began by editing the setup routine. I set up the system to operate with the Tormac 8L lathe machine library, and I'll be machining the cam nut from 5 8 inch diameter brass stock. I then designed the six separate tooling operations to machine the cam nut. This simulation demonstrates the overall machining operations of all the tools. I begin by facing off the brass piece, then drilling and tapping the center hole, and then doing the contour in the outer diameter of the piece. and then finish off with the cutoff tool to cut it off. I next use the post processor for the Tormac 8L lathe with Infusion 360 to generate the G-code program. This is the resulting G-code program. I then copy this G-code program to a memory stick and transfer it to my Tormac lathe and proceed to machine my first cam nut. However, a few problems arose with the machining operations, which needed to be corrected by manually modifying the G-code program. The first problem is that the G-code to rigid tap the 1032 hole did not properly work with the G-code generated by the Fusion 360 software. I'm not sure if I did something wrong in my Fusion 360 setup, or perhaps the Tormac 8L post processor is not properly designed for rigid tapping. So what I ended up doing is creating the G-code for the rigid tapping operation in the Tormac PathPilot software using the PathPilot conversational programming. The resulting G-code from the PathPilot software is displayed on the right above. Notice that it's quite different from the tapping code from the Fusion 360 software. In particular, the line beginning with G33.1 is a Tormac code to generate rigid tapping operation. The Z-value of minus 0.5 is the depth of the tapping operation, and the K value of 0.312 is the pitch of the thread. I then copy this section of the G code from the PathPilot software for the rigid tapping and post it over top the code in the Fusion 360 G code program. When I tested this modification, it worked perfectly for the rigid tapping of the 1032 threaded holes in the face of the step. The next problem was the parting off operation. 
The Fusion software provider for the parting off using the front tool post. However, I'm using a gang tooling setup and the parting tool needs to operate from the rear tool post. So I needed to modify the starting and ending X dimension positions for the cutoff operation. Notice in the Fusion 360 G code that the starting X position for the parting tool is a positive 0.67 inch position. This is the front position for the parting tool, utilizing the front tool post. So I change its value to a negative 0.67 value for the rear tool post position. Notice that the ending X position for the parting tool is a negative 0.0312 inch, which is just past the center position. So I change its value to a positive 0.3012 inch value. Also notice that the retract speed for the parting tool is the same as a cutting speed at one inch per minute. I want to speed up the retraction speed, so I change the retraction speed of the parting tool to 10 inches per minute. This will just speed up the total machining time. Also notice in the last step of the parting operation, right after the parting tool reposition to the G30 position, it then reset the tool position of the X and Z to zero. I do not want this because I want the tool to stay at the G30 position and get ready for the next machining operation of the cam nuts. So I commented out this line. Again, this just saves time for the machining of multiple cam nuts, since I needed to machine about 100 of these cam nuts. After making these changes, the parting tool worked perfectly from the rear tool post position. When I ran the G-code program, the lathe paused with every tool change, and I needed to manually restart the lathe operation. Since I'm using the gang tooling that I designed, I do not need to manually change any tools, and I do not want the program to stop between tool changes. Again, I want the program to run as fast as possible with no stops for tooling changes. So I then comment out all the M sub zero stop command control lines at the beginning of each tool change. These code lines begins with the line code N10, N12, N14, N16, and N18. After commenting out all these G code lines, the system ran perfectly with no stopping between tool changes. In summary, I made the following five manual changes to the G code program that were just described in this video. This enabled the system to operate properly and sped up the machining time for making multiple offset cam nuts. I also considered one additional change by commenting out all the M3 and M5 commands for the stopping and starting of the spindle. I did not make the changes for this project, but I'll definitely give this a try on my future projects. Again, this should just speed up the overall time to machine the parts. These software changes are all quite easy to do. After I made each change to the program, I did verify that the program worked properly before going on to the next software change. After I set my system up one day and ran a bunch of parts, and then I come in the next day and I return the system on, and I reset my X and Z, and as a result, when I uh, run my piece, when I run my pin, maybe the diameter is off by a thousand of an inch. It's supposed to be a quarter of an inch, and this is, you know, basically right on for this for this uh, pin. But if this would say high or low, I can adjust the diameter of the pin when I'm machining it. And I don't do that by adjusting the G-code, because the G-code is accurate. It was accurately dimensioned in, using the Fusion, Fusion 360 software, so there's no need to adjust the G-code. What I do want to do is adjust the tool position relative to the system. And that's done by adjusting the X value on my system. So if I ran this system and I set my, my um, X value to some value, in this case it's, you know, negative 1.00. And if I wanted to, you know, increase the diameter of that pin, all I do is increase this number. I just go and uh, retype over the number. And if I go and make this 1.00. One zero. Enter. And that increases the diameter of the pin. So the next time I machine this part, that pin will be a thousand of an inch larger. Likewise, if the, if the pin was too, uh, too large, I want to reduce the size, I just go back in and reduce this uh, number to by a thousand of an inch. And you can adjust this not only in thousands, but tenth of a thousand of an inch. You can get numbers dialed in pretty accurately to get accurate X dimensions. And that dimension will follow across all your other tools that you set up in the, in the system. Likewise, you can also change the Z position, but that normally isn't necessary. If that's off, you know, a thousand or so when you reboot your system, 
Uh, that's just adjust your initial starting point for machine the parts. That usually doesn't need to be adjusted, but it could be if you needed to adjust it. Okay, another issue that may come up is maybe one of your dimensions for one of your tools is off. For instance, my uh, end this this piece is supposed to be uh, 0.125 inches, and it's about a thousand to a thousand and a half oversized. So I need to reduce that that length by adjusting my parting tool. So in this system, I use four tools. So I go to my offset pages. And if I go to the offset table, you see I have the four tools. My facing tool, my two drills, and my parting tool. And these tools are fine. I don't need to, need to change them. But my parting tool, I want to change that dimension to the sections in the system like this. I want to reduce that length by a thousandth and a half inch. So all I need to do there is go to the, the Z dimension in my table here and reduce that value. Instead of making it 0, 0.155, I'm going to make it a thousand and a half less, make it uh, 0 0.40. And that'll change that dimension, and next time I machine this part, it'll be a thousand and a half less in the thickness. Likewise, you could change the exposition also if you wanted to in the system, but uh, again, I don't only need to do that. So there's some of the changes you can make to allow for uh, system parameters. In this case, what I'm doing is I'm balancing this tool against the facing tool. You notice my facing tool, these values are zero. So these are zero relative to the machine position. And this is the difference and change between the you know, tools and the, and the facing tool. So all I did here is I reduced this, this length by one and a half thousandths of an inch. This concludes this video on the modifications of the G-code and path pilot positions on the Tormac 8L lathe. The following video shows the final machining of the offset cam nuts using the G-code software modifications described in this video. For additional details on a complete CNC lathe and CNC mill machining of the offset cam nuts, please watch part one of this video series. Once again, thank you for watching this video. Okay, here we have the actual operating of the lathe. First of all, using the front tool to face off the bar. I'm doing that in two separate steps. Next, I'm using the number 19 drill to drill the center hole in the brass bar. And I'm using pecking motion to drill this hole. So I'm using the 1032 tap to rigid tap the hole in the center of the bar. Next, I'm using the front right hand cutting tool to cut the outside profile of the brass offset cam nut, machining both the stem end and the base hub. Since I'm using gang tooling, each of the tooling operations continues with no interruptions or stops for tool changes or machine operations. This produces machine parts as rapidly as possible. The final operation uses the rear parting tool to cut off the cam nut to its required length. Using described software modifications, I machined over a hundred of these offset cam nuts.